Hi, welcome to .NET Tricks Ace for .NET Core Master Training Program. Earn a valuable hands-on experience and start an amazing career in Ace for .NET Core. This training program we have divided into six weeks. In this course, we will follow the given learning path. In first two weeks, we will do hands-on on Ace for .NET Core concepts like Ace for .NET Core architecture. .NET CLI, MVC pattern, routing, tag helpers, and what are the various data passing techniques in ASP.NET Core. Furthermore, become expert of advanced topics like data listing, areas, middlewares, filters, MVC Core pipeline, and security etc. In the third week, you will learn about link and entity framework core. In link module. You will learn about how to use LinkPad to write and debug your queries. Then you will learn about the link query syntaxes, SQL joins, lazy loading, and eager loading concepts. In Entity Framework Core module, you will learn about how the Entity Framework Core is different from Entity Framework 6.x. What are the data modeling approaches, database migrations, and how we can call the database objects. Like store procedure and functions. In the fourth week, you will learn about design patterns and unit testing. In design patterns module, you will learn about how to use and implement most commonly used design patterns like MVC, repository, unit of work, and dependency injection. In the unit testing module, you will learn about unit testing best practices. And .NET Core unit testing frameworks like MS Test and XUnit, along with mocking framework like MOQ. In the fifth week, you will learn about ASP.NET Core Web API and how to develop the project. In ASP.NET Core Web API module, you will learn about some background details of services like SOA, SOAP, REST, and how we can decide between WCF and Web API. Once you will develop confidence in all these technologies, you will learn about how to integrate all these technologies to build a project as per the real-time industry scenarios. In this way, this hands-on training program will help you to become master of ASP.NET Core in six weeks. The project is the most important module of this training program. Here we will develop e-commerce website by following the layered architecture. In this architecture, we will develop application core layer using Entity Framework and database migrations. Here, we will follow the recommended design patterns and practices. In repository layer, we will use generic repository and repository design pattern along with unit of work design pattern. Here, domain models we will use in UI layer and in repository layer. For validation and data transfer, even domain model entities will be used in application core layer for defining database constraints and relationship between database tables. In UI layer, we will use ASP.NET Core, MVC, and Bootstrap for making rich UI. Here, we will develop modules using areas. Implement security using filters and ASP.NET Core identity. Furthermore, you will learn about how to integrate payment gateway, do error logging, and optimize your web page performance using bundling and minifications. And finally, the project will be deployed. Let's get started with the ASP.NET Core development. Here I'm using Visual Studio 2017 for creating ASP.NET Core project. So let's go to the file option. Then we have new and select the project. Then in the web section, you will get the option for creating the ASP.NET Core web application. And you can see this ASP.NET Core web application we can develop using Windows machine, Linux, and Mac. And even we can deploy on all these operating systems as well. So let's define the application name. Let's say web app core is my application name. Then define the location. So I'm selecting the location here, let's say desktop. Now click on OK button. 
so it will create now you can see these are the available templates for creating ace.net core web application so you can select here empty template for creating an empty ace.net core application you can select the web api template for creating the ace.net core web api then you can select the web application so this web application template is available from ace.net core 2.0 for creating ace.net core razor web pages web application but here in this session we will use a web application using mvc pattern so we will follow the mvc pattern for developing our ace.net core mvc application here we have other template as well if you want to use angular and ace.net core for developing the single page application you can use this angular template even you can use the react.js template as well for creating the ace.net core and react.js single page application and we have here one more template that is react.js and redux for creating the ace.net core web application so let me start with the web application mvc pattern then here click on ok button and you can see it is creating the ace.net core web application for us now let's understand the folder structure for our ace.net core web application so you can see here we have ww root folder so this ww root folder we use in ace.net core a web application for putting our static files like css images javascript file even if you will see we have a lib folder so what are the front end libraries we are using in our application so those libraries will be the part of this lib folder so you can see here we have the bootstrap we have the jquery we have the jquery validation library we have the jquery validation and octosave library so these libraries will be downloaded using the bower so with the help of bower we can download all these front end libraries for our application the so bower is a front end package manager as we have the new get for the dot net package manager same way we have the bower for managing the front end packages for our ace.net core application then you can see we have the controllers folder so in the controllers folder you will find we have the home controller because we have selected the mvc template so in the mvc template so automatically added a home controller for our application and this home controller we have index method we have about method we have the contact so all these are the action method so these action method are going to render the views so corresponding to this home controller you will find a folder in this views so you can see corresponding to my home controller i have a home folder and corresponding to all these actions we have the views file as well so you can see corresponding to the index action we have the index file corresponding to the about action we have the about.cshtml file and now guys here we are using the c sharp as a programming language so that's why the extension for the file is CSSTML in Razor. Then you can see we have a shared folder as well. In the shared folder, you will find we have a underscore layout file. So this underscore layout file is is responsible to provide the consistent look and feel for the application, and it is behaving just like we have master page in a Spot Net platform. So on this underscore layout file, we have to add all the commonly used CSS file references, all the commonly used JS file references. and you can see in ace.net core we have the environment tag so this is available from ace.net core so you can see here we are using this environment tag if we are running our application in the development mode so in a, so application we run in the development mode in you know the testing mode and the debug mode so guys here you can see it has the environment tag in the environment tag we are going to include the development environment setting so when we will run our application in the development environment so css from the lib and the css from the css folder it will enter but you know guys we will run our application in others environment as well like testing staging or like pre production environment so in that case the bootstrap library it is it will try to download from the cdn and our custom css it will try to you know load from our local folder and you can see here it is using the the minified version of the css like minified version of the bootstrap and the minified version of the the site so that we can minimize our 
static file size. So the environment tag will help us to decide which file we want to render in development environment and which file we want to render in production, testing and in, the, in other environment. Because here it is using exclude, means exclude the development environment and here include the development environment. Same way, we have the option for adding the references for JavaScript library. You can see we have the jQuery, we have Bootstrap. So these are the files are going to be rendered in the development environment. Then we have the files for rendering in testing environment and in pre-production environment. So you can see it is using the CDN for jQuery. It is using the CDN for the Bootstrap and for the our side.js it is using the mini min version of the side.min here and you can see here we have the by default menu provided by the bootstrap so this is the menu uh, markup as per the bootstrap css so this will create the menu for our application and we have here at the rate render body method so this at the rate render body method will render the content of the child page based upon the routing. So this at the rate render body method is just equivalent to the content placeholder as we have in master page. And even you can see we have the render section as well. So in render section, we are going to render a section with the name a script and it is required equal to false. Means it is not mandatory like on each and every child page, you have to render the section with the name script. So guys, sometimes there is a requirement to apply the validation on our view page. So in that case, we have a underscore validation script partial page. So this underscore validation script partial page, we can render easily with the help of this at the rate render section where you want to apply the validation on the client side. So now let's have a look on this underscore validation script partial. You can see here, we also have the setting for the development environment and we have the setting for staging and the pre-production environment. You can see it is trying to load the jQuery validation library and the jQuery validate and unobtrusive library to validate the user input on the client side. Then for the pre-production and the testing environment, it will try to load all the jQuery library from the CDN. You can see here simple. Then you can see we have a error.cshtml page as well. So this is the common error page. The ASP.NET Core MVC application will render for us when there is an error while running the application. Then you can see here we have underscore view imports file as well. So the role of this underscore view imports file is for adding the commonly used namespaces for our view pages. And even if you will see here, it is adding the setting for tag helpers as well. So if you want to use tag helpers on your view pages, so just add these namespaces here. I know guys, if you have the idea of ASP.NET MVC file, so you remember there we use their web.config at the view folder label. But here in place of web.config, we are using here underscore view imports file for defining the, uh, the, the view folder label setting. Then we have here underscore view start file. So this underscore view start file you can use for defining the common master page for our views. And guys here in ASP.NET Core, we don't have the web.config for defining the configuration latest setting. So this setting we can define here with the help of appsettings.json. So in appsettings.json file, we can define the database connection string and we can define the keys as well as we define in our web.config of ASP.NET MVC file and ASP.NET web form. Then you can see we have here bundle config.json file. So this bundle config.json file we can use to make a bundle of CSS files and to make bundles for JavaScript file so that we can reduce the number of requests for our static files and we can optimize our web page performance. So objective is here to reduce the number of requests for our static files so that our page will be rendered fastly into the browser. Then you can see here we have the program.cs file and the program.cs file you will see we have a public static void main. So guys here the ASP.NET Core is a console application. So obviously in the console application you will find a main method here. So the main method you can see we are calling the, the build web host method so that we can start our application host. I know guys internally using the cross platform 
कैस्ट्रेल सर्वर सो बिकॉज ऑफ द कैस्ट्रेल क्रॉस प्लेटफॉर्म वेब सर्वर वी आर एबल टू रन आर एक्सप्लोर नेट कोर वेब एप्लीकेशन ऑन द लिनक्स सर्वर ऑन द विंडोज सर्वर एंड ऑन द अदर सर्वर एज वेल सो दैट्स वाई एक्सप्लोर नेट कोर इज ए क्रॉस प्लेटफॉर्म बिकॉज इट डज नॉट हैव डिपेंडेंसी ऑन द आई एस वेब सर्वर सो एक्सप्लोर नेट कोर वेब एप्लीकेशन वी कैन रन यूजिंग आई एस यूजिंग यू नो इंजनएक् एंड यूजिंग अपाचे टॉम कैट एज वेल बट ऑल दीज वेब सर्वर विल एक्ट एज ए डेलीगेशन सर्वर सो इंटरनली द एक्सप्लोर नेट कोर वेब एप्लीकेशन यूज इज द कैस्टेल वेब सर्वर टू रन आर एप्लीकेशन then you can see we have a startup.cs file so this is startup.cs file we have in place of global.asx as we have in asp.net web form and in asp.net mvc file so you can see in the startup.cs file we have here the configure services method so in this method we will configure all the services which we want to use in our asp.net core application so you can see here we have added the mvc as a service because by default the mvc is not enabled for our asp.net core application same way we want to enable the session for your asp.net core application you have to add the session service here and in the configure method you can see we are going to define all the configuration data setting so you can see if the environment is development then it will show on the developer exception page If the if the environment is not element, it will show the commonly used error page. So this commonly used error page is available in this shared folder. So in the shared folder, we have the error page. So this will be shown to the end user. If your application is running in the testing environment or in production environment, then we have a method for using all the static files. So whatever the static files we want to serve from this www root folder. so we can serve only if we are calling this use static files method then we have a method for defining the routes for our asp.net core application so to run your asp.net core application make sure you have added at least one root so this is the root name the root name is default here and this is the the template url so as per the template url we have the controller we have the action and we have the id so here id parameter is optional and if you will see the default value for my controller is home and the default value for my action is index so when i will run my asp.net core application automatically it will look for home controller and index action so in the code if you will see we already have the home controller and we have the index action as well so when i will run the application so home controller index action will serve our application startup page so now let's run the application and see how it is showing the output to us so let's wait so you can see here the by default templates using by the asp.net core application it is going to render here so you can navigate to the about us page you can navigate to the contact us page this way so in this way our asp.net core application is running successfully i don't know guys if you will see here we have a model class as well named as error view model so whatever the the models you need to use in this asp.net core application we will add here so let me do one thing let me create a a login page so for the login page what i will do i will add a account controller so let me add a account controller here so just add controller then select the templates i am using the mvc controller empty template you can use other template as well like mvc controller with read write action mvc controller with views and entity framework So if you want to automatically generate the code based upon the entity framework database context and views as well you can select this template i suggest you should go with the empty controller so that you have the idea like what are the code you have to write to fetch the data from the database and what the code you have to write for saving the data into database so now here select the mvc controller empty now it is asking me for the controller name so controller name i am defining as here account now just click on the add button you can see here using this scarf folding it is going to create our controller and you know guys this scarf folding is a code generation technique and scarf folding nowadays you will find everywhere if you will use angular asp.net mvc5 everywhere you will find this scarf folding so we just today is using this scarf folding technique to generate the code for us 
Now we just define the action name as login because we are going to create the login page like login. Now just do right click on the login action and add view. By default it is suggesting the view name as we have our action name but it is not mandatory. The view name might be the different but if you are using the view name as we have the action name the benefit is that will be the default mapping and the view method I don't need to pass the view name which I want to render for this action. So I'm just giving the same view name as we have the login here. Click on that button. You can see again is scaffolding. It is generating the code for us. So I said to you like you can give the view name as different. So let's say if you are defining the view name as different. So in that case, you have to pass the view name as a string. So in my case, I know my view name is login. So I'm just passing here login. But it might, but it might be the case you have the view name as my login. In that case, my login you have to pass here if you want to enter the view with the name my login. But in this case, it is not required to pass the view name. I can directly make it empty. Simple. On this login page, I can create a HTML form using tag helper. In the tag helper, I can use the form tag like form. Then we have a tag helper like ASP dash action and the ASP dash action just define your action name so so action name would be here let's say login then use here ASP dash controller I don't know guys sometimes the intelligence might not work in your widget studio because of we have not built our project so let me build the project so that it will work fine so let's build the project and then reopen the same file so now you can see it is working fine. There is no issue here. Simple. And now guys, let me show you how we can create a model. So just add a model with the name login model. So I'm adding my view model here with the name. So just create a class with the name login view model. And the login view model class just set properties. So it will be here a string and then username. Then add one more property with the name string password I don't know guys if you want to apply the validation on the client side as well as server side for the username text box and the password text box so we can take the help of data annotation attribute so I can use here required attribute I think for the required attribute we have to add the namespace system dot component model and data annotation now we can pass the error message as well like error message please enter username same way you can make the password as required here so let me specify the error message please enter password so now for this login view model i can create the text boxes on this login page so this page i'm going to create as a strongly type view so to make this view as a strongly type just add the reference of model class using the model directive so user at the red model then application name space then we have the models and the login view model so now this is a strongly type view and for the strongly type view properties we can create the input control so let's create the div so i'm using a username then we have the text box input type text and just remove the name and the value it will be created automatically and here use asp dash 4 just define the property name so we have the property with the name username and if you want to show the error messages so we have a span for displaying the error messages so we have a ASP dash validation message for I'm using here username and we are using here bootstrap so in the bootstrap I can use the bootstrap class for displaying the error messages let's say text danger same way just add one more div for the password so I'm using here password and here use input type password and asp4 it will be here password and i want to show the error message for the password i'm using here password now here at a t4 creating the login button i'm using here input type submit and button value would be here login so in this way we can create our form input control using tag helpers now let's run the application and see how it is going to create our login page and now guys the login page I can set as a startup page so let me set the login 
at pages startup so just go to the startup.cs file and here we have the default value for the controller i'm defining here as account and the action as login so automatically when i will start my asp.net core application it will open so let's run the application and you will see the login page so you can see here i'm getting the username i'm getting the password so when you will enter the username and the password value we have to receive the value on the server side so for receiving the value on the server side you can see we have a form in the form just define the method here let's say i'm using the method as post and if you will look to the source code of your browser or your web page source code if you will see into the browser uh, you can see we have a method we have a form method is post here action is hless because we are set the account controller login index as a startup page that's why we are getting the hless here so when i will click on the submit button it will submit its input control value on the server side and you know guys if you will see whatever the the tag helpers we have used so all the tag helpers added the id attribute as username the name attribute as username and you know guys do you know what attribute is here responsible for posting your input controls value on the server side so here name attribute is responsible for posting your username text box value on the server side and the password text box value on the server side then you might be thinking like what is the role of this id attribute so this id attribute is responsible for doing the dom manipulation on the client side so if you are using the javascript or like javascript library like jquery so with the help of these libraries we can do the dom manipulation using the id attribute so id is here for client side manipulation and name attribute is for posting your controls value on the server side and this is the html rule so it is applicable everywhere it doesn't matter whether you are using mvc5 asp.net core java and the php everywhere these rules will be followed so guys yes so far we don't have any post method for accepting the value for all this input control so what we have to do we have to add a post method so in the controller let's add a post method for receiving the values when i will click on the login button so just copy this login and define the post here as http post and what are the input controls name attribute we have with the same parameter name we can access the value so for username i can use here a user name as a receiving parameter a string password put the breakpoint here now let's run the application and see how we can receive the values for username and password so i'm passing the username value as let's say shailendra password is 1234 now just click on login button and you will find i'm getting the username as shailendra password is 1234 and this way we can receive our input controls values on the server side so guys i hope you really enjoyed the session thanks for watching the video and see you in the live session bye bye